So, on this rather windswept day, I'm going to try for the third time to update the RD8 firmware. The first two times have failed, uh, principally because the instruction set that Beringer issued was wrong, uh, or non-existent, should I say. Now I have a set of instructions of how to do this, I'm going to have a go at actually doing it properly and correctly for the, first, for the third time. Here we go. So the first thing we need to do is to go off to the Beringer website and we need to get the downloads. So for that we go to Beringer.com, we hit support and from the support website we scroll down until we see downloads. I'm just going to get rid of the cookies uh, message and click on downloads. Now we have to find the download for the drum machine. Now I know that this is under drums, under electronic drums, under rhythm designer, and there we have several options here. And the option we want is firmware. So we click on that and we get two options in the download section. We get the update for Mac and the update for Windows. I'm going to use the Mac updater, so I will download that now agree to the terms and conditions and hit the download button. And it's now downloaded to my computer. So that's capture of the software. Now we have to set the uh, RDA up for receiving the file. Now they make a number of comments um, in terms of how to do this. So at this point in time, it says connect it to power. There's power. It's not on. As you can see, this is raised. There's nothing on about this. And it makes a very important comment about there being no MIDI cables connected. And as you can see, there's no MIDI cables. And at this point, we don't have the USB cable either connected to the device. So the RD8 is in the right state to be set up. The next thing we need to do is we need to connect the RD8 to uh, the computer. So there's the cable. The other side of this cable is connected to the Mac. But again, the unit at the moment is still switched off. So we now move back to the computer for the next part of the operation. So the next part of the operation is to take the file that has been downloaded and to put the computer into update mode. We do that by extracting this file. Now this is not not to be, uh, well we expect this to happen because this file has come from somebody other than Apple and Apple don't like you opening other people's files. So rather than move it to the bin as it suggests what we do is we use the control key and then we open a window with all the options and then we select open from this window. Now you can see that another option has appeared, which is the open option. I'm going to say I want to do this. Click open. Um, updating software rather than opening on top of the window has opened up behind the window. But there you go, the updating software has uh, loaded and is waiting to find the, the uh, RD8 in update mode. So now you go across to the RD8 and put the RD8 into update mode. Once you've started the process on the computer, you then need to boot the RD8 into a mode that can accept uh, the update. To do this, what you need to do is find this little hole here. And they say use a paper clip. I tend to use something um, a little bit more that I can get my fat fingers on, which is this happens to be a very small Allen key. And that fits quite nicely into that socket there. And what you do is you press that, and you can hear it go click, and then you switch the unit on. And then you release. Now the one thing you'll notice when you set the unit up in receive mode is there is nothing on the panel. The unit is on, it has power, but there is nothing being received there's no visual indication that the unit is on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this out of this mode and switch it on normally. There you go. That's what would normally happen. And when you set it up in receive mode, 
as you can see, there is no visual indication whatsoever. As you can see, now that the RD8 is in update mode, the machine or the updating program has detected it and says, do I want to update? Of course I do. So I'm going to click the update button. It's now come back and confirmed that the update has been successful. So you click OK to exit. And that is the computer part done. Now that it has completed the update, we need to, at the back here, turn the unit off. Turn the unit back on in normal mode. And there you can see the unit has now updated and is ready to go. left is to find out what version of the software we're running on the on the machine to do that what we do is we press the settings key which is over on the right and then we tap and hold or we hold should I say we hold the tap and hold key and then we press step key number five and if we now look let me try that again if you can see scrolling across the screen there version 1.35 and then to come out settings mode press the settings key again if you liked the content of the video you've just seen please give it a thumbs up it just helps the youtube algorithm with its selection process if you want to leave a comment please feel free to do that as well um, down below somewhere should be the ability to do that um, I do try to respond to all the comments that are raised on the channel. Uh, sometimes it takes me a few weeks because of what I'm doing and I'm getting more and more and more comments and uh, questions raised on the channel so it just takes sometimes a little bit of time to do a bit of research. If you want to be notified when I put more rants, mailbergs and videos about this sort of legacy tech and even modern tech on the channel hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon, and you'll be notified by YouTube when stuff happens. I try to publish at least two times a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. Until next time, bye-bye.